I live in Santiago de Querétaro, marked here with an A. One day I decided I'm tired of living in the desert. I want to go swimming in the rainforest. So I started off on a journey towards lush vegetation and crystal clear waters. My first stop was this mountain town of Piñal de Amoles, the halfway point between the desert and the jungle. While driving through the pueblo, I asked a kind gentleman if he could tell me a great place to get a bite to eat. He pointed me in the direction of Grandma Maria. Grandma Maria is famous in this neck of the woods. All the bus drivers stop here for breakfast. Grandma Maria has the uncanny power to make simple ingredients like eggs, tortillas, and beans take on amazing flavors that surprise you at first bite. Egg tacos never tasted so good. After a few bites, I noticed that my taco turned into the bat signal. Needless to say, Batman did not show up and he was definitely missing out. Also on the table were a mix of pickled onions and habaneros and grilled cactus. The food was so good that I came back a second day and she had chicken and mole, shredded cactus, and eggs and potatoes and chorizo. So I'm here in this place that's called Gate of the Sky, Puerto del Cielo, and um, they told me, we used to live in the United States, and you know what you don't have? Comida del Campo, you don't have country Mexican food. So I'm here eating some country Mexican food, I've got some chile that's guisado, or I've got some pork that's been slow cooked in a red sauce with some cactus on the other side, or some nopales to be specific. And I've also got some chicken mole. And when they served me the mole, they said, you know, mole is de bodas, it's from weddings. So no one's getting married today, but if they were, this is what they would serve. And these are the best beans I've ever had in Mexico. I have to ask her her secret and uh, find out how she makes these. And before you leave, don't forget to make a trip to the outhouse. Now this section of this episode doesn't need music. All we need to hear is the sounds of the water. This area is called Puente de Dios, Bridge of the Gods. Oh, it was so beautiful to be out of the desert and finally surrounded by incredible rivers again. Mexico is a country full of natural wonders. There is a wealth of caves, springs, and canyons to explore. Some folks are city folk, others belong to the mountains or the ocean. Me, I'm a river man. Always have been, always will be. I made it all the way back to this cave and had the pleasure to take a brisk shower under a stalactite that flowed fresh water. Continuing my journey deeper into rainforest territory, it felt great to be surrounded by green, green, green. I wasn't missing the barren, arid desert at all. Not one bit. Speaking of green, I wanted to show you this not so gringo friendly salsa I find this guy making. Notice anything alarming? That's pure green chili peppers, known here as chile serranos. If you have trouble with spicy foods, don't get within 10 feet of the salsa. I don't think they'd allow him to bring it on an airplane. It's that spicy. Did I mention that I love living in Mexico? Real, authentic Mexican food is a special treat, even when you eat it three times a day. I was buying bread at this bakery and asked the woman if these were the newest torta rolls that she had. She invited me back behind the scenes so I could pick from the newest, fresh out the oven pastries. The bakers all made recommendations and showed me what had turned out best that day. Mexican people are so open and friendly. Have you ever been invited to hang out with the bakers at a bakery in the States? I haven't. You know, Mexico has dozens of little sweet treats to choose from. But when it comes to baked goods, I gotta be honest. Most Mexican cookies and sweetbreads are really dry and crumbly. They go well with the coffee or hot chocolate, but on their own, they leave you feeling pretty cotton-mouthed. Mexico's most famous cookie, the polvo ron, is literally named after dust, or polvo. This one-of-a-kind place is known as nacimiento, or the birth, because here a river is born. The water flows out of these rocks and continues on to be the river which you weigh on. I can't believe I had this whole place to myself. I felt like a kid again. I walked back into the jungle to find this cave, known as the Cave of the Parrots. The locals say that it used to be home to all sorts of exotic birds, but today the cave is eerily quiet. Where have all the birds gone? Foreign poachers used giant nets to trap nearly all the birds at once, scooped them up, and sold them off to collectors in other countries for top dollar. But the older people of the rainforest community told me it just isn't the same without all the brightly feathered birds flying through the trees. 
It's heartbreaking to think that we are kidnapping these birds from their natural habitat so they can spend the rest of their lives living in tiny cages. Next on my trip was one trippy location, a labyrinth of surreal structures designed by poet slash multimillionaire Edward James. The castle of Edward James includes more than 80 acres of natural waterfalls and pools interlaced with wild concrete sculptures. James was born wealthy and spent his childhood in a mansion in Scotland, a mansion that had 300 rooms. When he built this place, he didn't want it to have any walls. Most of it is open-air walkways that you could fall off if you aren't paying attention. Why did he build this place? At one point, before he built the concrete structures, the property only served as his orchid sanctuary. James had nearly 30,000 orchid plants, but when a freak cold spell killed all of his orchids, he resolved to build flourishing structures that resembled flowers, but he would build them out of concrete so bad weather could never take them away from him again. Construction cost more than $5 million. To pay for it, James sold his collection of surrealist art at auction. Here you have this feeling that you're being watched, and then you realize that James has hidden eyes everywhere. Finally, my tour guide pointed out to me that Edward James had the coolest bathtub ever. In the rainy season, when the river is really raging, this was his hydro massage tub. The water would flow out that hole in the concrete, but protect him from the rocks and branches tumbling down the rapid water. I'm going to order a breakfast taco. This woman wakes up every morning at 3 a.m. so she can have hundreds of breakfast tacos ready by 8 a.m. She sells both gorditas made of corn and tacos made with wheat tortillas. I thought it was interesting that this local woman chose the corn gordita and I chose the flour taco. I've read some anthropologists theorize that we are genetically predisposed in our choice. I chose the wheat, supposedly, because my ancestors came from Europe, and the local woman might have chosen corn because her ancestors are from the Americas, where maize was the staple food. An interesting theory. What would you have chosen? <laughs> <laughs>